uh, today we are we we start looking at this uh, programming language named Java. Uh, Java is uh, an object-oriented programming language. It is designed from the scratch uh, like an object-oriented programming language. And uh, whatever Java uh, did, uh, they did it uh, to be compatible with the object-oriented programming language uh, idea. So we will not see many, we will not see uh, many cases like we saw in C++ where we would say this is not object oriented, but Java does it anyway kind of stuff. It will happen, but it won't be much. Okay, it is originally uh, beginning of 1990s. Okay, 1990s, uh, before internet became uh, uh, well known among the public. Okay, uh, they started designing this language with Java. So uh, its initial versions, its initial initial uh, releases of Java uh, was affected uh, greatly by the development of internet, especially the World Wide Web, uh, World Wide Web protocols. And in fact, the idea was to write a programming, to have a programming language for programming for the intelligent consumer electronic devices. Okay, the idea was this, computers were getting more and more popular, Get they are getting smaller and smaller. So you will have small computers on, on um, refrigerators, washing machines, okay, dishwashers, microwaves, etc. So how are we going to write programs for all these kind of different platforms? Okay, so let's have a programming language. Okay, uh, uh, when you write a program in this programming language, once you compile it, you could run your compiled code anywhere you like. Okay, it could be either a desktop computer or a laptop computer, mainframe computer, or dishwasher or refrigerator, whatever it is. Okay, so that was the idea originally for intelligent uh, consumer electronic devices. Then when the uh, internet world wide web, world wide web uh, became uh, so popular, uh, Java is, was used to uh, create web pages with dynamic content. Nowadays we are using different stuff. HTML5 is doing this by itself or JavaScript. Uh, uh, PHP kind of stuff is used more for this kind of purposes for web pages. Java is not to use much. But then later people realize that this language is very easy to this language is very easy to this language is very easy to um, write pro uh, programs with. Uh, the, the development time is a lot uh, smaller, sh shorter. In a short amount of time you write big programs. Also the number of bugs that average a programmer introduces is smaller. So let's write enterprise applications. Applications like uh, computer programs like for banking sector or for governments or for, for example, uh, a, a energy firms, right? So this kind of stuff became popular in Java nowadays is used for Java is used. Okay, let me. Serdar, we can. Okay, okay, okay. So Java, Java is used for uh, uh, for enterprise applications most often nowadays. But uh, uh, along with the advantages, there are some disadvantages of Java. It is slow compared to uh, faster languages like C and C++. And uh, that, doesn't, that doesn't mean that Java cannot be used for that kind of time-critical applications. In fact, uh, nowadays people started using Java for embedded system programming too. Uh, 
Uh, so if the embedded systems are fast enough, why not use uh, Java for those platforms too? So uh, that, that, that, that was the idea of Java. So let's look at some typical Java development environment. Like all the other programs like C or C++, you write your program using an editor. Okay. You write your program using an editor. Then you compile your program. Okay, so these two parts are okay. We do it with C and C++. After that, it changes. After that, it is a little bit different. Okay, your compiled program is not an executable program directly. Okay, we call that program compiled Java programs bytecodes. Okay, and bytecodes are not intended for CPU execution. With C and C++ programs, whatever you compile and link is an executable program on the CPU and operating system. With the Java, it is not, okay? That bytecode has to be loaded to the memory. It has to be verified against the uh, security restrictions, and it is executed by this Java virtual machine. Java virtual machine okay uh, so java virtual machine is not a physical machine actually it is a program it's a software piece of software this piece of software runs your bytecode okay so this piece of software runs and it takes this bytecode as a input file and it runs it it interprets it that's why for your Java applications to run, you need another program on that platform. So two programs kind of running at the same time. One is Java Virtual Machine, the other one is your program. That's why uh, it is a little bit slower than C and C++ programs. Let me show you one example. Okay, this is what we did actually with the typical C++ programs. Let's say I have a test.cpp, okay? This test.cpp is a C++ uh, file. I compile it. Okay. I compile it. Let me, let me I compile it and then I link it I have an executable test.exe, right? Test.exe. So on my computer, which is a Windows machine, this is what I do. I take this file, okay? I compile it and I produce the executable file and execute it. And this would be the picture here, okay? My test.exe runs on a, runs on a, um, let me see, okay, here, okay. My test.exe, runs on Windows operating system, which is on top of the hardware, okay? So all I need is the hardware and the Windows operating system for test.exe. Of course, if I take this test.exe as a file and put it, put it on a, on a um, Unix machine, okay, it will not work, right? Because your compiled code is not portable with C or C++. Okay, you have to compile it on different platforms uh, with the appropriate uh, compilers. That's what you need to do with C and C++. That's why we say that C and C++ are portable at the code level. Portable at the code level. Your code is portable. Okay, you compile your code on Windows machine or you compile your code on Linux machine or Unix machine or uh, uh, Mac OS 10 machine, it doesn't matter. Your compiler will compile your code and it will produce a different executable code. Okay, so uh, uh, that's that's that's the idea. That's the idea of uh, C and C++. Java is not like that. Okay, let's say I have a I have a Java program, test.java. 
When I compile this test at Java using Java compiler, Java, Java C, Java, okay, Java C, Java compiler is the name for the Java compiler. And in fact, it's the name of the uh, program itself. Like when we say G++, it says, I, I don't find the uh, uh, uh, input files. When you say Java compiler, it will say, okay, I don't know what to do because you didn't give me any file names. Okay, Java compiler is the Java is the name of the compiler. When you compile a program using the Java test at Java, it will produce you a test that class. Class is our our object code. Okay, this is our object code. Okay, then you take this object code and you give this object code to your Java virtual machine, which is a which is another program that runs on your operating system. Okay. In this case, it's a Windows operating system on top of hardware. I could take this, I could take this test.class, okay, and run this on another machine, which is a Unix machine in this case, and it will run. So once you compile your program, once you compile your program, you can run this compiled code test that class on different machines as long as that the machine has JVM Java virtual machine okay which is kind of an interpreter it is not a compiler it is not a simulator it's we call it interpreter okay but it is a program okay it is a program so if you have the Java virtual machine uh, on on your on your computer then any bytecode compiled somewhere will run doesn't matter doesn't matter where it is okay let's say this is your uh, um, this is your uh, uh, washing machine wash machine hardware okay it has a cpu and it has some embedded software okay embedded operating system and it has java virtual machine your test.class will work on that machine too without a need for any compilation okay without any need for compilation that's why they call it compile once run everywhere okay that's the idea of java and they use this functionality actually they use this functionality to write code for the uh, for the cell phones right for android development for the android operating system development we use java operating system mainly okay J sorry for the android operating system we use java programming language uh, mainly uh, so the, one of the advantages of java of course they are not using the java virtual machine advantage in that case but uh, for android programming java is used uh, uh, mainly okay android is written in c all the operating systems are written in c uh, mostly in c because it is c and c plus plus because it is faster it produces fast code but the c and c plus plus are difficult to write with okay you need to be very careful you need very well educated and experienced programmers to write c and c plus plus code like like yourselves okay you are good c and c plus plus programs but not everybody are like you okay uh, uh, some people need less education and uh, some people uh, uh, uh, are not as careful as all the other people so uh, writing programs in java is uh, more is more uh, uh, logical uh, for many cases that doesn't mean that whoever writes in java is that a bad programmer no it doesn't mean that humans the human nature they we make mistakes okay doesn't matter how experienced you are the experience shows that okay the same programmer same programmer if it's a good programmer of c and c plus plus the same programmer will make less errors if they use java also the same programmer produces slower code if they use java okay on the average on the average <coughs> okay so that's an introduction to java i never i did not show you any java programs yet but i'm giving you uh, the the one of the main one of the main uh, uh, 
starting points of Java. Uh, they say that, okay, we are going to design a new language in a way that it will be portable at the compiled code level. It will be compiled once and it will run everywhere. And that will be very advantageous for the new technology, web technology, World Wide Web. Why? Because if I have a web server, if somebody is connected to the web server using a Linux machine, they will get my Java program and they will run it. If it is um, uh, OS 10, they will get my Java program and they will run it. Windows, Android, doesn't matter. So <clears throat> whoever connects to my, my web server, doesn't matter where they connect from, my Java code, compiled Java code will run on their machine. Of course, this is a very serious security risk. And uh, that's why after that, people did not use Java much because Java was too too powerful to let uh, to let this kind of picture to happen. Because if you do that, many people with bad intentions will cause problems. Okay, good. So that was a small introduction to Java. And this is what we are doing with the Java development. We edit it and we write our program to desk and we compile, okay? We write our compiled code which is a class.class .class file. It is not .o file or .exe file. It is .class file. Then there is a class loader, part of this Java virtual machine. <coughs> it loads it loads that, uh, that .class file. Okay, we will not have just one single .class file. We will have many .class files. Okay, each dot class file will represent a class or set of classes, and they, they are supposed to be loaded to the memory. After that, we have to be careful because we don't know where this where the, where we may not know where this code comes from. We verify it. Okay. We verify it and we should make sure that. Uh, this code does not violate Java's does not do not violate uh, Java's security restrictions. After that, Java Virtual Machine freely runs that code on my machine. Okay, that's the idea. So let's look at some let's look at some example Java programs. <coughs> Before that, I need to get rid of what I had written before did I remove them annotations okay so this is your first Java program comments are comments classes are classes Functions are functions. Okay, so this is easily understandable. In Java, <coughs> everything is class, okay? You cannot write any global functions. By the way, you don't call functions functions in Java, you call them methods. In C, C++, Whatever you call as function in Java, it is method. Okay. So this class, <coughs> this class has a single method. It is called main. The meaning of main is almost the same as in C. C and C++ programs need exactly one main function to make to make them a runnable executable program, right? Java is the same. If you are writing an executable program, it has to has it has to it has to uh, have a, a main method. Okay, here is my main method. But my main method has to be of course public. And they declare this main method as static. Okay, static main method. So that means that uh, 
I don't need to make an object of this class welcome one uh, to run this main. This main could be run using just the class name and the method. Uh, unlike C and C++, the main method do not does not return a value. It is just void. Okay. These are my command command line parameters. Remember the command line parameters of C and C++. In Java, <coughs> I have the same thing. Okay. They are, they are the command line parameters. So this is a string array. This is how you write arrays in Java. And we will talk about it later. And our first executable line in our program is system out print line. Okay. <clears throat> this is like um, our C out objects. Okay. There is a system package and under that there is an out object and it has a static method named print line. And I call that print line with the string. Print line basically prints a string on the screen. After it prints it, it puts a new line character at the end. That's why it is print line. Okay. <clears throat> Once I do that, I compile it, produce the class file, and I put I give that class file to Java uh, virtual uh, machine. Okay. And it will it will run it. So let me show you one example here. In this directory I have <coughs> I guess its name is welcome Java. Let me really see if it is. Let me open up my notepad. <coughs> yeah, welcome Java is this. Public class welcome. Okay. It says, okay, I'm going to take a string array. And you might think that where is the number of elements in it? Arrays are like in Java are like vectors, similar to vectors. Not exactly, but uh, they know their sizes. And I would, well, this one uses printf, not print line. Printf is exactly very similar to what we have in uh, C, printf. So it says that this is my format string. Welcome to Java and percent s and percent is just student okay <clears throat> let's compile this what is the name of the compiler java c and i will compile ja welcome that java okay it runs and runs and runs and it didn't say anything so that means that uh, that means that uh, no errors Let's see what I got on my directory. I got this welcome.java. So that's my bytecode. Okay. That's my bytecode. When you say welcome. Okay. Welcome class is a jump compiled Java class data. And welcome.java is C source ASCII text. So let's run it. The name of the Java, <clears throat> the name of the Java virtual machine is just Java, okay? And you would say, welcome, okay? Java uh, uh, and space welcome. When you hit enter, it runs, it says, welcome to Java student. Okay, like, like we expected. That's it. That's how you compile and run your Java programs, okay? Again, to run our C or C++ programs, we did not need any other programs. Okay. But to run our uh, Java programs, we need this Java virtual machine. Java virtual machine. Okay. Java. You need it on, on Windows systems. You need it on Unix system. You need, uh, you need this on 
Linux systems uh, or Android systems, whatever uh, it is, you need it. Okay, you need it. Do, does anybody have? Uh, uh, uh, is anybody okay? Let me let me give you. Okay, that's a good. That's a good thing. Okay, let me. I am sure. Let's do this experiment. Okay, so this is my explorer window. Okay, I produce Java that class. I compile this on a Linux Windows machine, and I am sending it to you. Okay, Java class file. Where can, okay, Java, Java class file. Okay, take that class file, okay. Uh, whoever has a Linux system running now, run it using Java, uh, uh, uh, using Java virtual machine, the program named Java. Or if you have a, a, a Apple system, run it on the Apple system. Or if you have a Unix system, Fedora or something like that, run it and it will run. Just test it. I compiled it on my machine and it's going to run on your machine without no problems. Okay. Good. So let's go back to the slides and let's try to see what we have missed so far. Uh, the program is simple enough. There are many rules that you need to learn first. We never said our classes are public, right? In Java, you have to do that, okay? And the rule is, rule is this. You need to have exactly one public class in your Java file whose name should be exactly the same as the file name. See, the name of the file and the name of the public class is exactly the same welcome one and I had the same thing here welcome is the name of the class and welcome here is name of the file another program add num is the name of the class public class and add num is the name of the file so that's the that's the rule okay that's the rule your uh, pro the, your file name should be exactly same as the exactly same as the uh, public class name in that file you may have more than one you may have more than one classes but one of them has to be public public class public class means that i could use objects of that class outside of this file maybe i should put file in quotes i don't want to mean file but uh, for now let's say it is file there is a corresponding concept in java uh, uh, which is similar to the concept of uh, compilation units okay we are going to call them packages okay uh, packages are kind of similar to compilation units and similar to libraries okay so uh, this public is accessible from all the other packages outside this package uh, uh, available to the others, okay? That's one thing. The other thing is this. We never, we never said a function is a public like this before, okay? In C++. We said that we have a public section and private section and protected section in our class definitions okay in java all the members of a class okay method members or data members we don't call them uh, data members okay we call them okay in cc plus plus it is data member in java we call them fields okay by the way these are all standard object-oriented programming language terms, okay? Object-oriented programming language people 
And object-oriented programming, the idea of object-oriented programming is very old, from 1960s, okay? So, object-oriented programming language people, they don't call them, okay, they, they, they, they don't say functions, they say methods. They don't say data members, they say fields, okay? Okay? So, uh, whether you have a method or a field, okay, you put a public, private, protected, or default at the beginning, okay? Good. And main doesn't return anything. It is just void. It is just void. Good. Okay. Uh, any any questions so far? You should have some questions at this point because I told you many things. Some of them are surprising. Some of them are okay. This is expected. Hocam, Hocam what's the statistic about? Mehmet, I did not get your question. You asked what? Uh, the static keyword at line 7. The, the meaning mean? of the static is exactly the same as in C++. I mean, main is a static method. That means that who calls main in C++? We never call main, right? Who calls the main? The operating system, right? In C++, main is called by the operating system. Is that correct? Yes. So who, who is going to call the main method in Java? Java Virtual Machine will call it. But to be able to call a function of a class, what do you need to do? You need to make a, you need to make a object of that class, welcome one then you call it, right? But in this case, since, but in this case, since uh, uh, main is a static method, you don't need, a, uh, you don't need to make, a, you don't need to make a object of class welcome one. All you need to do is you just say, welcome one dot main, and whatever the parameters are, you pass it, okay? So that's how you call the main method in Java, okay? So the, the Java virtual machine does that. When I, remember this one? When I say Java space welcome, okay? So Java virtual machine says that, okay, there must be a welcome.class somewhere, it is here. Welcome.class, okay, it is here, okay? And uh, uh, I am going to run it, but what am I going to run out of this one? I am going to call welcome.main, okay? It doesn't need to make a object of this welcome class. Since the name of the file and the name of the class has to be the same, I know that there has to be a welcome.main inside this welcome.class, okay? Good. Any, any other questions? Can you see chat? Can I see chat? No, all I see is whatever, whatever I had written. I think there is a problem with my chat again. Let me try to switch to other. Uh, just a minute, just a minute, just a minute. So people are making it so bad. So welcome class. After that, well, after that, I sent you welcome class. I don't see anything else now. Are there any questions? No, actually, they are saying that the connection is uh, there is something wrong with the connection. Some people are saying that. I think we all say that. How about now? Is the connection okay? It's kind of better. But I'm not getting any messages. Let me, let me try to, okay, I am connected at both. I am connected both by wired and wireless. Okay, so I will try to speak slower then. Did anybody run my uh, welcome.class file? 
Did anybody run my welcome that class file? Uh, yes, sir. I did in uh, VCN machine. You did on what kind of machine, Suleiman? VCS, sir. Windows subsystem for, for Linux. Oh, okay. So you use okay. So and it worked. Yes, sir. Okay. So yeah. So that's the that's the idea. I compile it and you run it everywhere that you like. As long as you have a Java virtual machine. So how do you get the Java virtual machine? Uh, it is easy. You just go to you just go to Oracle. Okay, Oracle is the uh, maintainer of the Java programming language. Okay, and you go there with the Oracle. There are lots of uh, documentation. Also, uh, it will tell you where to download uh, all the stuff. See, there is an embedded version for the Java. Java ME embedded so i mean this would have been funny like 20 years ago java embedded when you say i am i am doing embedded programming using java people would laugh at you nowadays they're laughing at us because i mean embedded systems are powerful enough to spare a few cpu cycles so the the, the fact that your code is the fact that your code is um slower doesn't make much difference because because embed system is uh, fast enough it, it has memory and it has it can it has all the capabilities to run jvm so why not develop the embedded software using java language okay so you need specialized java development environment and that kind of stuff okay so uh, so you get your java virtual machine and sometimes they call it Java Runtime, J-R-E, J-R-E, okay. J-R-E, download, okay. If you say Java Runtime Environment, just Java Runtime Environment doesn't include the compiler, okay. Java Runtime Environment doesn't uh, include the compiler. It is just for the uh, Java Virtual Machine because you don't need the compiler for all the environments. You need to compile it for, for, for one or two environments only. For Windows and Linux, it is enough. Whatever you compile there, it will run on all the other environments as long as it has the Java runtime environment. Okay, so let's, let, I'm trying to see what kind of environments we have for the JRE. What, what is this? So it is for Windows. No, I think I think best place for the JRE is from Oracle. Okay. Downloads. When I click here for the JRE, if I am lucky, okay, I am getting something. Okay, see, these are the Linux uh, different versions of it. Okay, Intel platform, 64-bit uh, platform for the Linux. Then you had the Mac OS uh, stuff. Solaris was a very popular Unix-based operating system. And we have the Windows now. You will find other... Uh, popular versions of JRE for different embedded systems too. Okay, so there are many versions of it and they are not very big as you see. Okay, as you see, it is like 80 megabytes, that kind of stuff. I mean, compared to gigabytes of uh, gigabytes of uh, uh, packages for the development environment, these are very, very small JRE. Okay. Good. Uh, so let's continue. What else? Let's continue after we talk the static. We are going to come back to it. Uh, maybe you have noticed that there is no, there is no semicolon at the end of class definition. Right? We don't have it. We don't have it in Java. Okay. The reason why we don't have it, we are going to see uh, in a few minutes. What else can I say about this? I guess that's, that's, that's 
for now that's it okay okay another program this program is going to add by the way nobody asked it i don't know why you guys are not question, asking any questions if you are writing your questions at the chat window i cannot read it i cannot see it oh okay i see it now bağlantı bir tek bende mi kötü barış yes barış it is only bad for you uh, atakan says çok kötü it is not that is that not string hüseyin ömer hüseyin ömer says that is that ne? okay hüseyin ömer yes he says that he says that your main method your main method should be going to like this yeah that's that's how i prefer it but the book's example the early versions of java was like this okay later they switched to this version okay this is better but the early version stayed that way and we, we are backwards compatible okay you say no uh, let me bring this here and try to see what else uh, okay suleiman he he he ran his my welcome stuff on his computer simulated co emulated computer and he got the results back okay so i cannot read your chat stuff i need to go somewhere else so just use your microphone to ask questions and you are not asking questions which is a bad bad sign uh can main return something like in c no it is void no. but in c we can return void what we can return void yes are uh, you mean do you mean can i yes. write can i write a return here yes yeah you could write but you cannot return it and you cannot say minus minus one but if you could say return just because it's a void i mean if a, if a function is void in c you cannot return anything you can return but you cannot return anything with you uh but can we um return some uh, make it not void and return something no because no no it has to be it has main. to be it has to be void that's the definition of java so you are saying yeah. that how am i gonna how am I gonna tell the operating system that I am returning something like that, right? I mean, you are not running on the operating system. You are running on the Java virtual machine. Okay? And you don't know what kind of operating system that Java virtual machine runs on. It could be a Unix, it could be a Windows, it could be an embedded system. So you don't know about the operating system. C knows about the operating system. C says that, okay? I am going to I am going to use the standard input to get this one if they like they can pipe it and C is developed and C++ uh, for the same sense is developed uh, having Unix in mind okay C thinks that it is running on a Unix system okay C thinks that it's running in a C system all the C function like the opening file, closing file, that kind of stuff, they are all uh, influenced by the POSIX operating system system calls. Okay, so they are they are they are very much reflecting whatever they think that operating system can do. In Java, we don't we don't, we cannot make those kind of assumptions. So returning something to the virtual machine does is not that meaningful. Of course, there are ways of communicating with the Java virtual machine, but it is not like returning something. Okay. So whatever you get from this Java welcome, okay, is a is a return value of the Java virtual machine. It is not your welcome program. Okay. uh okay let's continue and we talked about this let's let's see another program let's see another program um 
People did not ask in my previous one, how about the include statements? Where are the include statements? In Java, we don't have include statements. Okay. No include statements. In Java, we don't have preprocessors. No preprocessor in Java. No preprocessor in Java. By the way, you read Java as as in Turkish Java, like Java, or or this is in Turkish, right? I am writing this in Turkish. It is not. Okay. Java. This is how you read it. Don't say Java. It is Java. Okay. Um, uh, uh, in Java, we don't have no, uh, processors. That's why we don't have include statements. Okay. We don't have include statements. There are no headers. No header files. Can I ask something? Sure. What if we want to add uh, our own library? Well, in Java, of course, you could do that. I am going to show you, and we call them packages. I mean, you are saying that if there are no header files, how am I going to know what kind of classes I am using? Where am I going to read them and that kind of stuff, right? That's the first thing. That, that's the first question that I get from C programmers, actually. Um, for some reason, you did not ask this question. Uh, y yeah, but there are other ways of achieving the same goal, and I'm going to show you in a few minutes. Okay, so let's see our new program. Our new program is, let me show you the output first. Enter first integer 45, second integer 72, as uh, it has these two numbers and sum is 117. It is as simple as this. So let's see the program. Okay, addition.java, addition is a class name, public class name. The class starts here, six. Okay, and um, uh, it ends here 27, and this is the end of, no, no, no, it class ends at 29. This is the end of the main. Okay, let's look at this main method. Main method is command line arguments, public static void main, but line three is import. Import is is kind of in between the using statements and the header files. Okay, you are saying that, okay, there is a um, class named scanner. I am going to use it like using statement, right? That scanner is part of Java util package. Java util package is a library, okay? Java libraries are named like that. Java libraries, there is a library named Java util, utilities. And under the utilities, there is a class named scanner. I am going to use that scanner to read stuff from the keyboard. Okay. Scanners could be used uh, for reading stuff from files, network connections, etc. In this case, I am going to use the scanner to read data from the keyboard. Okay. So let's look at this main method, line 11. Line 11 makes a new scanner object, okay? And this is the constructor, of course, like in C++, of the scanner. As a parameter to the scanner, I give this system.n. System.n is the standard input. So I am saying that, okay, system is obviously a class. n is a member of that class, okay? I am giving the system.n as a parameter to this scanner uh, class, okay, the constructor, and I am making a new object of that scanner on my heap, okay. So in C++, this is supposed to be a pointer, right? This is supposed to be a pointer. So if it is a pointer, then this scanner input must be a 
a variable that can hold a pointer. And if you think it that way, you are exactly right. But in Java, we don't have pointers, okay? They say that in Java, we don't have pointers, but, but, but, let me tell you this, okay? In Java, we have references, and the definition of reference is somewhat different from uh, C and C++. In Java, we have references. References are very much like shared pointers. Remember the shared pointer? And it's, it's a pointer actually. Okay. Let me make this like a more similar to our references. Okay. Shared pointers. Remember the shared pointers are smart pointers. They are basically pointers, but they keep the number of references to objects. If nobody is referring to an object, then it is destroyed automatically. Okay. References are exactly like that. Okay, references are exactly like that. In Java, we don't have regular pointers, but we have references. So we use new operator to make new objects, and we assign whatever is returned from new to references. Okay, when we don't refer to an object anymore, then that object will be destroyed automatically. So in Java, we have a new operator, but there are no delete operators. Okay. In Java, we don't have a delete operator. You will not delete any object yourself. Everything will be deleted automatically. You are not allowed to. In C++, we have a delete operator and we are supposed to use it. With the shared pointers, uh, most of the time we can avoid using any delete. Uh, uh, operators, but in Java there are no delete operators, okay? Everything will be deleted automatically when the reference count drops to zero. So, this scanner input is not a Java object. Input is a, okay, input is a reference. It's a reference to a scanner object, okay? Input is not a object. Object is created using this new operator. And in Java, again, another rule, there is no way, okay, uh, well, th there are some exceptions to the statement, but let me tell you this statement as a 100% kind of thing. There is no way to create an object other than the new operator. If you like to create an object, you have to use the new operator. So all of your objects has to be created on the heap. Okay, all of your object has to be created on the heap and there are no delete operators. So when you say scanner input, it looks like, I mean, when you say scanner input and put a, like that, okay, it looks like uh, a, a, a, an object of scanner. No, it is not. When you say scanner input, it's a reference. So it's a think input as a smart pointer, okay. Think input as a smart pointer. Okay, if you don't assign anything to it, it doesn't point to anything. It doesn't point to anything. Okay, good. So I said many things here. You cannot create an object or in Java without using the new operator. Okay, and uh, when you create an object using the new operator, you have to point to that object using a reference, Java reference. Input is a Java reference here. Okay. So all the objects in Java are created using new operators. And then I have three integers. Integers are just variables. Okay. Regular variables. And we kind of did the same thing in C++, right? We, I was, I was, I was trying to be careful about not calling integer class or double class a class, right? I would say these are variables, these are not classes. Okay, integer and double, they are very much like classes, but we don't call them classes. They are types. They are, they are variables. Integer, okay, these are the variable types, integers, doubles and characters, okay? But this is a class. In Java, it is the same thing. Scanner is a class, 
Okay. If you like to make a scanner object, then you use the new operator. But integers are created like C and C++. This is an integer, another integer, another integer, three integers. Okay. Let me finish up this program. After the program, we will take some break. Okay. So system out print. Remember, this is not print line. Print line prints and uh, puts a end of line at the end. This is print, not print line. Okay. System out print. Then input that next int input is uh, is pointing to a scanner object right when you say input dot next int okay it will run the method of next int uh, from this class on this input object and the, the what the what this method does is it it it goes to the standard input and it reads one integer and it returns it and i assign it to this number one and assign I assign it to this number one. Okay, next int. Okay, so maybe you notice that this is not this is not input arrow next int. Okay, this is not because we don't have this operator in Java. We don't have the arrow, arrow operator in Java. All we have is the dot operator. So how do they know the difference between the dot operator and the arrow operator in that case? You don't have to because all the all the objects are created using new. And to be able to keep a pointer to an object, I need to use the references. When you say scanner input, okay, input is a reference to input is a reference to a newly created object and if you like to call anything on that on that object okay then you need to use the dot operator there, there is no need for uh, arrow operator because uh, you don't have object names in java okay so this this gets the next integer and then i write another uh, message on the screen enter second integer i get the second integer i add them up number one and number two and i and assign the result to uh, the third integer sum and i use our classical printf sum is this okay and that's it that's the whole program okay good that's that's that's the end of this program so end of main method and the end of the class edition. You compile it and you run it and everything will be okay. So this program used how many objects from outside for it uses the scanner object. Other than the scanner, I didn't do oh, okay. I have the string class, scanner class, and I don't have anything else, right? How come I did not import anything about the string? We will talk about it later. I mean, remember for C++, I had to include string header file to be able to use the string objects. Okay, but in this case, I did not use it. I did not import it. We will talk about it later. Okay, any questions? Any questions? So over? Is there a what? Comparison to create. Mohammed, I did not hear your question correctly. Just speak slower, but louder. Uh, is there ampersand operator? Ampersand operator. Uh, no. In Java, I mean, just take a Java book, okay? Java book of 600 pages. Hit Control F. Control F and search for this word pointer. You will not see it. There are no pointers in Java, okay? There are no addresses in Java. There are addresses, of course. They are using the pointers and addresses, but they don't talk about it. You don't, okay? You don't take addresses of objects, okay? If you like to know the address of object, it is this, okay? 
This input holds the address of this scanner. Okay. In Java, you don't take addresses of anything. You don't take addresses of anything. There is no such thing. Okay. So since there is no uh, pointer stuff in Java, there is no pointer arithmetic. Okay. There is no pointer related stuff. There is no sending a pointer to a function and returning from pointers. You don't make that many mistakes in Java re regarding the memory management and the usage of the heap and that kind of stuff. All you can do with the objects is create them and use them. You create an object and use that object. Whenever you are done, okay, whenever you are done, this input will be killed. When input is killed, nobody is referring to that one. That one will be killed automatically. Okay. So this would eliminate lots of dynamic memory management related errors. That was the idea. There is no ampersand operator now. There is no dereferencing operator. There is no ampersand yes. operator. And we don't need it. Bless you, whoever it was. Okay, any other questions? Hocam, can we write something to the line 28? Can we write something to line two, yes, and, yes. 2 and 8? What do you mean? Two? You mean line 2 and 8? No, no, 28. 28, 28. Okay, let me, let me sh open up another program. I think I have Adnam Java. Okay. I think I found this somewhere. Adnam. Do I have it? No. Okay, what, what do you want to write at 28? Oh, you mean here? Sure, why not? I mean, I could say, I can say, if you like, this is a part of the class, right? Private integer i. So that makes a private field or private data member of this class addition. Okay. Or you could write a method there, okay? A private method or public method. So Java classes are like this public class uh, let's say okay let's write the money class okay you will say for in java you put your private stuff at the beginning okay you don't you don't you, you are not ashamed of them you you put them at the beginning you will say i have one private integer dollars and I have another private integer cents and I have a constructor that won't take anything but it will set cents and dollars to zero I have another constructor that will take two integers dollars and cents and implement it whatever it is and then i have another constructor that will take a double d and i will implement it whatever it is okay but at the beginning of each of these i need to put public these are all public there is no public section or private section in java at the beginning of each member, okay, either a method or a field, you need to put these access specifier, public, private, protected. Sometimes you, you don't put anything. That means something else, okay? So did I answer your question? Yes, thank you. Okay, any other questions? Okay, let's take a break. Let's be here around uh, 11 46.
Gidebilirim bilmiyorum ama bir şey oluyor diye Yok. Evet. Tamam ben geldim sesince. Sen bir önce birisiyle konuşuyor herhalde değil mi? Konuşuyor muydun? Tamam. Adamlar geldi mi anne? Ee, aracın önünde ben. Aracın önünde tamam. Bir güzel. Tamam. Zeynep imtihanı değil mi? Daha korumaya başlamadılar ama değil mi? Tamam. İyi oldu. Dağıtma. Dağıt ya da üstte mi yok ya? Kağıt hemen çıkar yerine. Tamam. Evet, çünkü beğendiğimi yapacağız. Beyaz deneyi biraz. Evet, tam beyaz değil beyaz değil. Karşı taraf aynı olmasın diye istedim. Karşı taraftaki adamın eviyle aynı olmasın beyaz diye istedik.
Efendim yok tam beyaz değil yok böyle şeyimsi bir yer, pembemsi bir yeşil bir rengisi. Yani yeşilimsi hakikaten. Sen dışarıda mısın? Teyzen ya uzun yolda yürüyorsun. Teyzen yürüyor mu? Hangi merdiven dedi? Bahçedeki merdivenleri mi? Ne kadar inat bir kadın bu ya. Ya çıkma diyor şu merdivenleri ya. Neydi o merdivenlerin tutacağı yok bir şey yok. İçerideki merdivenleri çıksın. Tamam güzel. Bir 16 o yeni olmalı çadan deli altı alma dedi ya. Dedi, dedi ki ilk hafta, ilk bir iki hafta dedi. Değişebilir dedi. Bunların dedi etkisi dedi. Bir iki haftaya çıkıyor dedi. İki hafta önce de etkisi veriyor dedi. Şey yapma anne ya, tatma o hallolur ya ne olacak? Az yetişkin insanlar var. Hala yeter ya. Okay, so this is our program, and uh, it adds two numbers. Uh, let's go back and let's try to see if we can see anything else. Uh, we talked about the references. We said that references are like smart pointers. Uh, and if you like to think them as pointers, that's fine. They are like pointers, but they are not exactly pointers. They are more like uh, smart pointers. And uh, we talked about the classes and objects to, as I said before, Neve is the only way to make an object in C++, in, in Java, sorry. In C++, let me write some programs. In C++ programs and Java programs, okay. Let's say I have a class money, whatever it is, I do it that way, right? Okay, I have a class money, but I put a public in at the beginning. Dot, dot, dot, I don't say a semicolon in there, okay? To make money objects, I will say money M1 and $10.20. Or I can say, or I can say, money pointer 
mp new money ten dollars and twenty cents that's what would i say in in c plus plus but in java when you say money m1 here m1 is a money object okay m1 is a money object in c plus plus but in java m1 is a money reference money pointer if you like to say it that way okay so there are you cannot give names to objects in java m1 is the name of the object and this object is created where where where is this object created at what memory location this object is created heap or stack Stack. It is stack, right? How about this MP? Where is MP created? Deep. Where is MP, cre MP created? No, MP is on the stack too. This money object is created on the heap. Okay, money is created on the heap. MP is on the stack. Okay, and I make this assignment, right? In Java, this M1 is created this m1 is created on the stack but when we say m1 gets the value of new money ten dollars and twenty cents this money object is created on the heap okay so this m1 here or maybe i shouldn't say it m1 let me say this m let me say this what is this mc and this is mj mj okay c plus plus money and java okay this mj is created on the stack but this money object is created on the heap this money object is created on the heap this is on the stack okay so in c plus plus there is a way to create objects on the heap and there is a way to create objects on the stack both of them is possible okay uh, this one is created on the stack this one is created on the heap in java there is no way you can create a object on the stack okay all the objects has to be created on the heap using the new operator this reference however is on the stack okay this integer however okay integer i j like that these two are created on the stack like the integers i and j created on the stack in c2 okay so uh, these are some of the differences between c and c plus plus okay c and c plus plus since uh, since you don't have since you don't create an object on the stack in java there is no there is no call by value passing of objects in java because you cannot have you cannot touch the object only you have the reference to an object okay in c and C++ there is call by value all the time and and if you need to send it to a function without the call by value you need to send its address so in Java all we have is the address of the objects and I don't touch the objects themselves I don't have the object themselves and I cannot reach their addresses because there is no ampersand operator we don't talk about the addresses in Java okay any questions so far Okay, I have a few questions. Can mail return something like in C? I think I answered that. And must mail belong to a public class named with the, yes, yep. Yeah, mm -hmm. We talked about them too. Okay, so let's move on. What else? Okay, maybe we should talk about this. Can anybody guess? Can anybody tell me why we don't have a semicolon at the end of the class definitions in java maybe 
this is a better place to talk about it where is where are my differences okay here it is can anybody tell me why we have the semicolon here but we don't have the semicolon there is it because we can't assign any name to the class uh, well yeah uh, almost yeah in c plus plus what is the meaning of the semicolon you would say that you would say that okay what is the meaning of what is the meaning of i i erased it i erased that stupid thing it doesn't go away okay try to read it again i cannot touch it okay let me try to do this write a few stuff here and erase them back and come back so that it doesn't remember that it remembers it i need to raise this step okay i can oh i cannot read anything let me close this thing and open it again Okay, I'm, I'm giving up. I'm going to write them again. <laughs> I, I am giving up. Maybe, I, maybe this time I can raise it. Okay. In Java, okay, in C++, in C++, if you write a class, my, okay, my class there is a semicolon at the end but before the column i would say m1 and m2 you could say that right what is the meaning of this i am defining a class also i am making two objects of the class right that's the meaning of this statement in java in java if you say class my class dot dot dot okay if i say m1 and m2 this is a syntax error this one is syntax error why because you cannot create objects of a class without a new operator okay there is no way so there is no way to create an object like that in Java that's why there is no meaning of this semicolon so they have prevented this all together we are not going to use a semicolon okay that's why we don't have the semicolon in Java Java designers are very good C programmers C++ programmers they need C and C++ very well and they point out some of the problems and of c and c plus plus and they try to eliminate them all of them together so whatever you see in java you can you should always compare it with c and c plus plus because the language is designed that way language is designed to be similar to c and c plus plus but it is designed to be different from the c plus plus in cases where they think that c plus plus is not doing very good for example there is no global method in Java. All the main method, even the main method, has to be part of a class. This is what object orientedness is about. There is no global method. There is no global variable. Okay. They all have to be parts of classes. They all have to be parts of uh, classes. Okay. And they they saw that people are making lots of mistakes with pointers and the uh, 
memory management so they made it as simple as possible at the cost of some uh, CPU time they use references or the uh, smart pointers so what is the problem with smart pointers in C++ they are not as efficient as the regular pointers why every time you make an assignment you have to increment decrement that uh, reference count thing right so it's a it's a it's a it's a CPU time or every time you decrement uh, the every time you decrement the uh, reference count if it is zero then you have to destroy it so it says it's, it, it need you need some time to do that kind of stuff instead of letting the programmer do all that dirty work dirty work is done by the compiler and code generated by the compiler that will cost you some cpu time and java says it's, it's uh, java says that it is okay we are in 1990s we have powerful computers now okay we have powerful computers now uh, uh, I mean, in 1960s, 1980s, the computers were very, very weak. So when C is designed in 1970s, they tried to make it as efficient as possible, okay? Not even a single cycle of CPU time is going to be wasted. That, that's what they said. With the Java, well, in 1990s, I mean, we have powerful computers and the computers are getting more and more powerful. And nowadays it is the same thing too, okay? So the, the design philosophy is different, but whenever, whatever you see in Java, you can freely compare it with C and C++. I cannot say the same thing with uh, between C++ and Python, because Python, the decision... The design decisions of Python is a little bit different, okay? Uh, but C and C++ and Java, I mean, this is the rule, okay? If a name is the same in Java and C++, their meanings are the same. The meaning of main, the meaning of class, the meaning of int, the meaning of character, the meaning of new, they are all the same. If they have used a different name, Okay, if they had used a different name for something in Java, the meaning of that thing is different. Okay, for example, there are no const keywords in Java. Remember const? We use that a lot in C++. There are no const keywords in Java. Okay, instead, they have this keyword final. But the meaning of that final is, is a lot different than const. Okay, so using this technique of comparing with C++ all the time is a good way to learn Java. Okay, how do we do the same thing in C++? How do we do the same thing in Java? Okay, thinking it this way is a good way to learn Java and C++, both of them together. Okay. Okay, let's move on. Uh, okay, so let's see some differences, similarities between C, C++, Java. Operator presidents, arithmetic operations are almost the same. Okay, when you say B gets the value of C plus D times E over K. Okay, this multiplication is going to be done first then this division then this addition then the assignment presence is okay presence is exactly the same if statements if a is equal to b okay do do something else if you like you can put another f do something else if statements and conditions are exactly the same when i say exactly the same of course it is exactly the same as in C++. In Java, we don't like stuff like if one, okay? If we don't like this in C++ either, so we use booleans. We use booleans, okay? So we don't like it. This doesn't work. It has to be a boolean. Class definitions are very similar to C++. Okay, very similar. It is not the same, but very similar. Access modifiers are 
well almost the same almost the same public private the meanings of public private and protected are exactly the same but there is a default access modifier in java and the meaning of it will i will tell you in a few minutes java class functions are called methods java data members are called fields or instance variables fields or instant variables okay they are called that way in java there are no global functions no global variables in uh, java if you have something if you are defining something you, it has to be part of a class if you are doing something it has to be it has to do something with the objects so everything is about objects and classes in java there are no global variables there are no global functions just like what object oriented programming says okay good so classes have can have static methods static uh, member functions okay uh, uh, like in c plus plus static methods are like the static member functions static fields are the same as static data members okay and the static members are declared like c plus plus you would put static in front of the uh, you would put static in front of the uh, in front of the uh, uh, method or the method or the instance variable for constants java we don't have constants in java actually we have finals but we don't have constants i mean in java you cannot say let's say this is our main method okay in java public static void main you will say integer a there is no way to say constant double k 2.7 etc no there is no way to say that there is a keyword named final but final meaning is a little bit different okay so we will we will we will we will, we will talk it and there is no let's say i have a method m1 i have a method m1 void method m1 it will take a money object m okay you cannot say you cannot say constant money m no we don't have const keywords in java you might say we have the final keywords no but it doesn't final doesn't work here okay we will see examples of final later okay so there is no final keyword in java so you may ask how am i going to how am i going to uh, satisfy the principle of list per leverage i don't want this m1 to change this money object okay i don't want this m1 to change this money object there are ways of other ways of achieving the same thing even better ways of achieving the same thing achieving the principle of least privilege uh, uh, principle okay uh, can be done in other ways and we will see examples of it okay main method as we said before as we as we saw before is static okay so let's go on two types in java one is primitive types which are booleans bytes characters shorts integers long floats and doubles okay these are the primitives and primitives are declared just like in c you will say you will say i have a character c its initial value is a okay that's it later i like to change its value to b no problem so the primitive types in java work exactly like c no difference okay they work like that uh, okay no problems it's good 
Okay. Um, we don't use okay, all the primitive types. They are created in stack. This is in stack. Okay, not in heap. By the way, there is no. Maybe I shouldn't say this. I I, I don't I don't want to say some of the things because they are kind of scary. But well, maybe I should say that there is no new operator with the primitive types. You cannot say this in Java. Because where am I going to assign this? When you say new int. When you say new int, you cannot say this, right? Because i is an integer, it is not an integer reference. There are no references for the primitive types. Okay, there are no references for the primitive types. So there is no way to create an integer variable on the heap. There are other ways of achieving the same purpose, but you cannot do that, do this, because i is an integer, not a reference. This this is supposed to return a reference. This is by is this by itself is not valid, but this whole line is very very invalid. Okay, so let's go back to types in Java. Two types: primitive types and the reference types. Reference means that again pointers smart pointers or the shared pointers okay all the objects are reference types in java okay the, and all the objects are created on the heap using the new operator if you have a class these are not classes these are just primitive types okay these are eight of them uh, if you have a class to make a class object you use the new operator and that new operator returns your reference that's how you access your objects, okay? When I say I have a money money reference, money M1, the initial value of this M1 is null, okay? If it is not null for, okay, you could do this. Null is a Java keyword. Null is a Java keyword, okay? And it is used to, it is used to, show that this M1 doesn't point to any object. Null reference, they say. Okay. Null reference, they say. Okay. Good. Okay. When you say M1 dot get sense. Okay. In this case, Java, Java during the Java runtime, Java will give you an error message saying that M1 doesn't point to M1 doesn't point to uh, any objects. So there will be a null pointer or null reference problem, null reference exception. Your program will be stopped. This will compile, but this will not run. But sometimes the Java compilers get they get smart. They read this code and they say that this is not going to run, so I will stop it. Sometimes they refuse to compile this kind of code because they know it, that it is going to be crashed when it runs. But uh, let's say if you have, let's say if you have 50 lines of code between them, then the Java code will not, Java compiler will not know the, the, the value of M1 during the compile time. And it will compile this code. Okay. Any questions? Well, I am. I am. Yeah. Feel, I am feeling so uncomfortable. I mean, this is nobody's asking a question. Mm, I don't know where this is going to go. Okay, Mehmet yeah. Avni, you ask a question. Yeah. Uh, can we not send a primitive type to any form function to change its original value? No. No. There is no call by reference of primitive types in Java. Uh, sir, you told uh, when we creating an object from class, we should use new keyword. Uh, are LA's class in Java because we are we use new keyword in them? Well, we didn't talk about the arrays yet. When we come to arrays, you will see. We, and we are going to use new for arrays too. Okay, any other questions? Uh, what if we want to change some local variables value in another function? I mean, like 
uh, like we did in C with pointers. You cannot. You cannot. No, don't don't do that. Okay, don't. I mean, you can't do it. But I mean, you cannot. No. If you need, you are saying that I need to change. I need a, I need a method that will change my integer if it if it is needed. You cannot do the same thing with the uh, regular integers. But you may write your own class that contains an integer. Okay. And you would send the reference of that class's object to that method, and method does whatever it wants. But you cannot do this thing using regular Java integers. Okay, thank you. Okay, so this is designed that way. I mean, there, there are some good reasons for this design. Okay, to eliminate the need for to eliminate the need for. Uh, using the, the delete operators and the memory allocation stuff and that kind of stuff, okay, they had to make these kind of decisions. I mean, when we talk about the methods, you're going to see that every there is no call by reference in Java, actually. Everything is called by value. And uh, uh, all the primitive types and the reference types. But since the references are pointers, when you do the uh, call by value with the reference, you are sending the address of the uh, object uh, method uh, actually, and that object can do anything that it wants with the object itself because it knows the address under the hood. Okay. Good. Let me move on then. I think this example is going to make uh, a number of your questions uh, go away. There is a grade book class let's let's approach the problem using the object oriented way let's write some client code for this gradebook class there is a gradebook.java so this public class gradebook is the class inside that uh, java file let me skip all of them and let's go to gradebooktest.java so this is another file since the name is gradebook test the public class has to be the same in gradebook test and my main method in here i have i created two gradebook references gradebook one and gradebook two and i assign two gradebook objects to them okay the first one is a new gradebook and the constructor takes a parameter string parameter cs101 introduction to java programming this is string Okay, and the second one again, CS102 data structures in Java. Okay, two of them. And then, and then uh, I start using them. Printf, gradebook one course name is uh, percent %s, percent %s, and the percent %s needs a string, and this is where I get the string, get course name. Very simple class, okay. That gradebook will get, I think it keeps the class name. It has a setters and getters for it. That's it, I guess. Okay. And that's it. Although I use two new operators, I don't use any delete operators because I don't have the delete operator in Java. So this is the, this is the point of view from the client. My, as a client, I use my gradebook this way. I have a constructor. I have these. I have these uh, methods to call on those methods, to call on those objects. So let's go to a gradebook class, which will be in a different file. Let's see the implementation. Let's see the implementation of this gradebook uh, class. Gradebook class is here. Okay, it says gradebook Java is my class. My private string is here, private string at the beginning. Again, Java people put the private stuff at the beginning. Because do you remember why we put the private stuff at the end in C++? Do you remember that? We, I, to, I think I told you why we put them in the, at the end of the class definition. Uh, uh, because for the customers, uh, we want to show our interface. Yeah, 
because when the customer reads that header file, we don't want to show them our private stuff at the beginning. We try, we kind of try to hide it away, right? I mean, we put it at the end. The customer needs to see the public interface first. So why do you think Java people are putting private at the beginning? Isn't this object-oriented world? Why aren't they putting the private stuff at the end of the class definition? Because we use class in another classes. Well, we do the same thing in C++ too. Because uh, we don't give any header file. Exactly, exactly. And it's um, in Java, there are no header files. We don't give our code. We don't give this definition to our clients. Our clients don't see this definition. Our, cli our clients don't see this gradebook.java at all. Okay. This is not for the clients uh, to view. Okay. This is for us only, for the programmer only. And the programmer needs to know the private stuff before I start doing anything else. By the way, you need to implement and define all of your Java methods in this gradebook.java. There is no method implementation outside of the class. Once you start this line number five, you have to define and implement all of your methods. You cannot do it outside of your class, okay? Everything has to be done inside the class because we don't separate the class interface from the implementation in Java. So, but, but then I ask this question, how can we give what is available as members of this class to the customer? What does the customer see? How does the customer know that I have a constructor that takes a string. I have a setter that takes a string. I have a getter that returns a string and I have a display message method. How does the how does the client know that because I don't have any header files, right? So that's that's a problem. Java says that no, even though you are not writing any header files or any comments Okay, for that uh, case, there is a way to show your information to the client. This is what you do. Uh, let me show you this add num.java program. Add num Java. okay, it says that I have a method, public method, that takes two integers and it, uh, it adds them up and it returns it. And I have my main method okay it will uh, it will it will make a new add num class and it has these two numbers and returns the sum and etc so this is nicely written code but the customer is not going to see it why why would you put such nice comments on it right so this says that number a is the first parameter this is the second parameter it returns something it says that okay this method arguments, I am not going to use it. It doesn't return anything. It may throw an exception, okay, etc. And it has this nice comment at the beginning. The Adnan program does such and such and such and such. So it looks like they write their programs such that the customer is going to see this code. But then I am saying, I am telling you that you know you are not going to send this code to the customer. Java says that, okay. In Java development environments, I have Java compiler, okay, for compiling code, right? I have Java virtual machine to run my Java uh, uh, byte uh, codes. Then I have this utility Java doc. Java doc, Java documentation, reads your, reads your, Add 
reads your Java source files and it produces documentation for you, for your customers. Okay. Java doc reads your Java files and it produces documentation for your clients. I do that. Okay. It says that it says that loading source file uh, at Nam Java, constructing Java doc information, okay, docklet version something something. I am generating adnan.html, so it produced an HTML file for me. Okay, let's look at the directory now. So remember what I had before? I had only welcome.java and add maybe main.java. It produced all this stuff for me. Okay, let me try to open my directory. Here is my directory. Okay, let's open up this add num using cram HTML file. It produced an HTML file. Okay. So this is all produced by this nicely formatted file is produced by Javadoc. Javadoc says that okay. Add num is a class. And the purpose of this class, this is nicely formatted. So you see, do you remember they it, it used the, the the HTML tags, header tag? So you could put HTML tags and those HTML tags will be respected and they will be put in the HTML. If I add two numbers, okay. So I am giving you add to add num program implements an application. Okay. So the constructor is just this one. That's it. And then the methods, remember there are methods. Add num is a method, right? So if I click on add num, I come, I come here. See this one? This method is used to add two integers. All the comments put in there in the Java doc format are uh, placed in this uh, nice HTML file. And main is here too. And it, it says all the arguments, all the returns and everything. Okay. Since this is a very simple class, since it's a very simple class, I don't expect to see much, but you could do the same thing with complicated classes. Let's look at some of the other stuff that it produced. I think there is an index, yeah. Index all. With the index all, there is a nice index of, okay. All the methods of that start with A, all the methods that would start with M. Since I don't have much, uh, I, I cannot, I cannot see anything more. Okay. So all classes here, if I click all classes, how many, okay, I have only add num class, two numbers. And in fact, I can do this. Let me try to do something else. I produce the documentation for a single class only. But if I do this, if I produce the Java documentation for all the Java programs, okay, now I go back, I refresh this, maybe, yeah, see, I have my welcome class, main class, and add num class, because I have three Java files, and each one has some functions in it. As you see, there is no description for main and welcome because by main and welcome did not have any comments on them, right? Did not have any comments. So this is the answer. We don't give out our code or our header files. We don't have any header files to customers, but we have these nice HTML documents, or if you like, you can, you, there is a, there is a, very nice switch set for this Java doc. Okay. If you like, you can produce the PDF documents. Okay. I don't know. Okay. Postscript or for printing only. Okay. Here it is. I don't know what, uh, what is it? No navigation bar. Okay. No navigation bar is for printf uh, PDFs. Let me find the other PDF options. Are there no PDFs other than that? 
How do I do the PDFs? No, there are many options. I, I mean, there is a way to produce the PDFs instead of the HTMLs. So this is what you give your customer, okay? This is what you give to your customer. This is a better solution than the header files, okay? Header files is good because we, it is part of your source code, but it is only the interface. Now your interface becomes your documentation, HTML documentation or the uh, HTML documentation or the PDF documentation. <coughs> I think I am way out of my time. Maybe I should stop here and tomorrow we will start looking at this gradebook.java. Are there any questions? We did the implementations in the first part of this code. Uh, I mean, in, this, in CPP, we first define uh, at the end of the code, we implement the functions. Yeah. We can still do that, right? Well, yeah, well, in, in, in C++ or in any object-oriented programming language, you usually make a decision on your functions first, right? Your classes, then your functions, and then the implementation. You could do the same thing, okay? When you are writing this gradebook.java, uh, you make a decision on your, uh, you make a decision on your um, uh, uh, method names and their parameters, then you come back and you fill them in. You could do the same thing, or you could use a a, a software, a computer aided software engineering tool, such as enterprise architecture. Okay, if you if you do that, um, uh, uh, that program is going to give you the skeleton of your Java code, or your C plus plus code, then you fill the rest in. Okay, so. Designing your interface should be the first thing, okay? Without designing your class interfaces, you don't start uh, digging into uh, your uh, implementation. That would be a mistake. Thank you. And there's a question in the chat. Oh, yeah. what, the, what, what does it say? I don't see the chat. Anil Mert asks that, uh, does Java have any downside compared to CPP other than the efficiency? Well, uh, <clears throat> efficiency is one thing, the flexibility is the other thing. There is no left shift operator, right shift operator in Java. There are no bits in Java because Java doesn't talk about the hardware, okay? I cannot do I cannot do, I cannot refer to specific memory location in Java, okay? And I cannot say, if the specific memory location becomes one, then continue, no, I cannot, okay? And it is, the, the, the, the talking to the operating system is not that easy with Java. So it is not just efficiency, flexibility too, okay? In C, Okay, almost everything that an assembly can do can be done with C. Almost everything, not everything, but almost everything. Java doesn't have such a such an argument. Java doesn't say so. Okay, so that's why most of the system programming, operating system related stuff, closer to hardware uh, related stuff is done with C and C plus plus. So why not just do everything in C? Because C is much more. Uh, I mean, C is not object-oriented. We like to use object-oriented ideas with C++, but also we like to use registers to left shift, right shift, etc. okay? Bitwise operations. In C, th those kind of stuff is more, more C++ is more, more available than, uh, to us than the, than the Java programming language. Also, I mean, C and C++, it has a very huge library. Uh, because I mean, it has been 4 C 1974, right? Like 45 years, 45 years of nice libraries for C. In Java, yeah, we have even larger libraries, but the Java related libraries are more higher level, like to make things easier for enterprise applications, network communication, multi-threading, graphics and uh, uh, interfaces and etc. It's easy to done with Java because the libraries are available. 
but lower level programming is easy with C because of the C language and also the library is available. Okay. Any other questions? So uh, go over your C, C++ notes. Try to learn everything about C, C++ because as you see, I am just referring to C and C++ every other sentence. And uh, try to go over these slides. And let me give you these slides too. Where are, where are my slides? Where are my slides? I am trying to find my slides somewhere. Okay. I will I will make these available at the chat window when I find it and study these slides too. I am sorry I hit the wrong button. Okay. So I will make these slides available. Uh, I will find them. So study these slides. Okay, here are they. So you get them, you study them. And tomorrow we will continue our discussion on uh, Java. Okay, see you tomorrow.